Beer cans, baseball cards, other baubles. I really don't get the point of collecting things, really. My older brother collected beer cans. My son, Micah, collects anything, but lots and lots of beer. I, you know, I find dirty socks, like a collection. But no, 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 um, baseball cards, tons of baseball cards. But even as a kid, even as a kid, the only thing I considered collecting, can anyone guess? And, pardon, no, when, no, we didn't do Disney. Disney, Disney was a later, you know, I drank that, that Kool-Aid later in life. Shoes. Uh, what? Shoes. Ooh, good guess. No. Barbie dolls. Oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nice try. How about a hit? Uh, Coins. Coins. Coins! Remember me? I'll push a kid out of the way to pick up a penny? <laughs> but that was an old sermon a while ago. Not really, I won't. Well, not in the traffic at least. <laughs> so, no, I collected coins. Coins. And it made sense to me because coins, if you can get something that might be worth a lot, like this one is in its own case. A 1964 50 cent piece. Mm. Another 64 cent piece, a Liberty, this must be a dollar coin. These are some things that I collected, a few of them. And the thing is, they don't lose their value. Uh, I can't go anywhere and get a piece of candy with a baseball card. But if I really wanted to, I could use this at its face value at least and buy something. So I have those coins here. But even when I started traveling overseas, I would collect coins. And um, here I have a bunch. Does anybody catch very well? <laughs> anybody want to? I was going to toss, toss them. I should not. Here, look, I got, some, I got some coins here. I'll walk them around. I'll expect these back. <laughs> Canadian coins. This is a franc from 1943. I did not find that. I think that was my mom, actually. Um, I also had to pass these around a little. Um, I had also some coins from Thailand, and uh, I don't know where those got to. So um, yeah, I, I I collect the coins. A lot of those are euros from my trip that we just took this. Uh, this past spring, and um, you know, I didn't want to exchange a dollar in, in euros, euro coins. So, um, yeah, those coins are great. Now, I don't know, are there any heads on any of those coins, people's faces? Yeah. There are some. Do you know who that is? <laughs> I don't know who it is. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, there might be Queen Elizabeth on the Canadian, yeah, yeah. But not everyone would go, oh, Queen Elizabeth. Some of them, those, those heads, those people, those markings are actually kind of meaningless here in the United States, right? Because those coins have no value here. I have tried to pass them off <laughs> at the bank and other places, and it just hasn't worked. They are practically worthless here. I'd have to go back to Europe and, and to use them. That's the thing with coins. They're only good where the image stamped on them is recognized, where the title, the words, the things are recognized, where they are legal tender. Take the coin that the Pharisees and the Herodians had with them when they wanted to trap Jesus. Now, um, Mark, Matthew, Matthew, one of these Gospels, is giving us a hint too that, of course, he says it's a trap. Um, but the title of a Herodian meant that this group of people were um, supportive. Um, they supported King Herod, 
who actually was a puppet king of the emperor. So this, these are the, the political, religious leaders of their day. And so they wanted to trap Jesus. And so they asked him this question, should we pay taxes? OK. Um, <laughs> Jesus, we'll get to this. He says, show me the coin, right? Now, the image of the, on the coin that they had was the emperor. The emperor of Rome, that was the legal tender of the time. And by stamping his visage on the coin, the emperor was claiming sovereignty, loyalty, power throughout the land. As one commentator uh, said as I was doing the studying for the text, Roman coins, the point of them partly was to ask, and, or actually answer, who's your daddy? <laughs> it's the emperor, who's your daddy? That's, so the emperor was claiming all of this with those coins. These are also the same coins that the people, mostly the poor, had to hand over in taxes so that the Romans could build their roads, march their armies on them, the money that was used to pay for the swords, the weapons, the horses, the chariots the Romans used to conquer, control, and oppress the people of Palestine. And that was the key to how those religious Pharisees, Herodians wanted to trap. Jesus. If Jesus blatantly said, pay your taxes, be a good Roman, how do you think that would make the people who would follow him feel? How do you think they would respond? Pardon? Betrayed. Betrayed. Yeah. That could divide his people, the followers. Because here's Jesus, and he's telling them to pay the oppressor. Okay? That would disappoint them, betray them. It would look like Jesus was on the side of the Romans. But if Jesus outrightly declared that the people shouldn't pay their taxes to the Romans, well, this isn't just a case of mild tax evasion. <laughs> Back in the day, that would be sedition. Them theirs are fighting words. And that could arouse the ire of the Roman authorities, which, by the way, was actually what Jesus was convicted and executed for doing, was actually a rebellion. So um, that was the other part of the trap. If Jesus said, don't pay your taxes, the Romans arrest him. You know, he's obviously a rebel and an insurrectionist. But not this time, no. Jesus did not run headlong into that trap with his request to see the Roman coin, and by pointing out that it bears the emperor's image with those words, to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, Jesus sidesteps the trap. Because he isn't saying, be a nice, quiet Roman subject, nor is he inciting open insurrection. With those words, Jesus Matthew, as he shows us, is one kind of smart cookie. But wait, that's not all. You see, today's lection, lection this story, this lesson, this gospel, is what I would call a, a twofer. It's a two for the price of one. Because asking about the icon, that's the Greek word for the image that Jesus used for, on the coin, Jesus reminds those around him, those hearing these words, those early Jewish followers, he recalls for them the words of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, which are kind of like, so God created humankind in the image of God. Now this isn't the translation, but man, woman, trans, non-binary, all of us humans made bare 
carry the image of our creator, the divine one. Each and every one of us, whether Jewish or Persian, it doesn't matter what flag we fly, what language we speak, where we live, we bear God's image. We are God's currency. And that's what we hear about in that first reading for today, which declares from that prophet Isaiah that the Persian king Cyrus is God's anointed. The Hebrew word is Messiah. Sound familiar? <laughs> yes, King Cyrus was the Messiah at that time. God was using Messi uh, uh, Cyrus to defeat the Babylonians and send the exiles back to Jerusalem and the Holy Land. It doesn't matter, according to Isaiah, if Cyrus worships or claims some other deity, Yahweh, the God who will be who he will be, they will be, claimed Cyrus. This is actually kind of the opposite of this whole separation of church and state. This is God saying, no, oh, this is all my stuff. It doesn't matter. It's almost, as, as you mark, uh, noted in your liturgy, uh, Bob, it's like almost the start of the two kingdoms to see that God's sovereignty is over all state, church, everything. So unlike the coins that we have all around and we value so much, we people, rulers to the youngest one, we are emblazoned with the image of God, all of us, everywhere. And we are holy currency to be used. That's what Jesus is also saying to us. Give to God what is God's. Now you aren't gonna find a coin, at least maybe here. Well, it says in God we trust, but nothing's bearing an image of God in a sense, but us. You are all, in other words, very valuable. You are all worthy. You never can lose your value, unlike beer cans or baseball cards or stamps or whatever, coins even. You never lose your value, no matter how small or old or young or tired, no matter what others may think of you, you never lose your value because you bear God's holy image and that gives us power. It gives us purpose. We are not meant to just hoard and collect and stash away God's goodness somewhere, like a bank or something. No, like all currency, we are meant to circulate in and throughout this world, our families, our communities, bearing that image of God, sharing and spending the most precious currency, divine love. Amen. <laughs>